Where you're coming from and where you're going has one thing in common. You. Hello, Ralph McIntyre, Astro Matt Lynx. All my Pluto people, come on in. We're going to talk about the nodes of the moon. Karma, destiny. I'm in a little bit of a silly mood, I think, too. We'll see how it goes. Let's see if I can be serious or not. So, the south node of the moon in Libra, ruled by Venus. The karma, where you're coming from, the bad habits, the north node of the moon. In Aries, your destiny, where you're going. So to speak, your soul's purpose. We got Venus and we got Mars. Interestingly enough, we're dealing with the two personal planets. We're dealing with the seventh house and the first house. Aries rules the first house and Libra rules the seventh house. But I wanted to talk a little bit about action and reaction. Because on some levels, Libra's reaction, reacting to the other, and Aries is action or taking action of self. And it's interesting, I've been getting a lot of downloads on this and wanted to kind of share them out there with my YouTube people. Talk a little bit. It's Christmas Eve here uh, while I'm recording this. So for all of you that watch it tomorrow, Merry Christmas. And for all of you that watch it in the future, I apologize for bringing up the memories of Christmas past. So... The South Node. So to speak, hypothetically, what didn't go right. The North Node. So to speak, hypothetically, where you're going or what you don't know. Hmm, Venus, where you need to calm down. What attracts you? Mars, your passion, your assertiveness. You're kind of reaching out and grabbing, taking. It's interesting for me because I often will be hard on myself as far as what I'm doing or what I'm not doing, you know? Am I living up to what I'm supposed to do? I would imagine none of you out there in YouTube land have any uh, issue with that. And then as I was sitting with it, I realized it's like, Is life about what you're doing? From a karmic perspective, from a soul perspective, from an evolutionary perspective, is life more about focusing on what you're not doing? As in focusing on not doing what you shouldn't be doing. Because it's easy to focus on what you want to do or you want to should do, but like... Focusing on what doesn't cause karma, reactions. For myself, struggling with reactions, reacting to what someone else does, not wanting to, so to speak, drop down into their level. It's like, oh, you hurt me, so I'll hurt you back. Eye for an eye. It's interesting. I just watched this YouTube program on the uh, prison dilemma. And it was uh, quite enlightening. I might try to put the link to it in the description. But it was talking a lot about how we interact with each other. The nodes of the moon, how we interact with each other. Libra, how we get along. And Aries, how we assert ourselves. So from the south node of perspective, we're like the karma of getting along. 
Now, I've talked a lot about this, but I've talked about it from a different perspective than I, what I want to talk about tonight. It's like, where are you reacting? Where are you, so to speak, bringing on karma? So are you focused on not bringing on more karma? Or are you focused on what you're accomplishing in this lifetime? I know for me, most of my life, I've been focusing on kind of what I'm doing rather than maybe not doing what I shouldn't be doing. Not that I don't focus on that, but for some reason, that's what I want to talk about tonight. So another thing, as I was looking at the charts moving forward of the nodes, that Venus and Mars are kind of hanging out together. A lot, quite often, they're going to be in the same sign. Occasionally, they'll separate, like right now when I do this video, Venus is in Scorpio, Mars is in Sagittarius, but Venus is catching up to Mars, going to pass it. It'll be, Venus will be in Sagittarius at the end of the year on the 29th of December. Spend about a, give or take, you know, a little under a month there in Sag before it moves over to Capricorn and joins Mars there. And then it'll go on to Aquarius and then on to Pisces. Very significant. Very significant. So if you think about it, it's like you're kind of looking at the signs. We're geeking out here a little bit. I hope you're following me. If I'm not making sense, I'll try to be a little more clear. I apologize. So the ruler of the South Node, Venus... And the ruler of the North Node, Mars. But they're in the same sign. So it's like you're kind of looking at each sign. So wherever this falls in your chart, this is going to be very important to like look at where this is in your chart. Because these this stuff is going to help you understand, so to speak, what you need to kind of let go of or do different. The south node is let go of. The north node is do different. And so, Sagittarius. What you know. Talk a lot about this in my videos. What you know. Requires you to let go of all the things that you think you know to make room for what you need to know. The comfort of what I know. What's comfortable. Versus the fear of what I need to know, that Mars, Aries. So Mars is in Sag right now, wanting us to kind of like face the courage to let go of what we were told to know and have new things to know. And Venus will enter, like I say, at the end of the month. 29th. And so Venus ruling the south node, it's like, what are we holding on to? What are we getting along with? What are we, what about what we know we're getting along with? You know, holding on to it to get along. Oh, I agree with that. Pluto's getting ready to hit Aquarius. First part of the year. It's a small stint in Aquarius for a couple months, and then it comes back to Capricorn. But when it's in Aquarius, ruled by Uranus, which is ruled by that Venus, which is dancing with Mars and dancing with the nodes. So this is part of the reason why I want to talk about this, because this is all super, super important for all you those people, all my Pluto people that want to not fear, but fear this Pluto and Aquarius. 
nervous about Pluto and Aquarius. Way to get this transit right is to pay attention to how this is acting in your charts. Where, where this Venus and Mars is going to be transiting through your charts? Where the nodes of the moon, transiting nodes of the moon are transiting in your charts? So where do you have Libra? Where do you have Aries? What goes on in your seventh house? Where's your Venus? Where's your Mars? What do you have in the first house? And then also like Sagittarius, the, you know, when Venus and Mars are in Sagittarius, that give or take a month or so is going to be important for you to be paying attention. And then it'll go into Capricorn and then off into Aquarius and then Pisces and then Aries. I didn't track how far the Venus and Mars kind of track each other. Um, but I know that they go at least to Pisces, and I'm presuming Aries. So for the next few months, this is going to be really important. So looking at the Venusian, what you know about the Venusian, what you know about what you're attracted to, what calms you down, what you see is beautiful. So to speak, what you say no to, what you say yes to. And then Mars is kind of like, where do you let yourself desire? You know? And so the North Node of the Moon is like all these things that we're clueless about. A lot of people have a hard time accepting that aspect of the North Node of the Moon because the ego doesn't like to be clueless. But in reality, the North Node is like, Ignorance. But the beautiful thing about ignorance is it's curable. Stupid isn't curable, but ignorance is curable. Ignorance can be cured by knowledge. So as we have this dance in Sagittarius, which is fundamentally knowledge, Jupiter sits there in Taurus. Ruled by that Venus, ruling the south node. So really wanting us to look at where we're holding on to knowledge to stay comfortable. And on some levels, that's the key to that Pluto and Aquarius. You know? It's like if you let go of the knowledge you need to let go of, Pluto is always your friend if you let go of what you need to let go of. <laughs> Pluto like that. My friend Pluto, he likey that. Pluto don't play so nice when you hold on <laughs> to what you're supposed to let go of. <laughs> so, the whisper. You know, this Venus Mars traveling together. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon the more I think about it. The rulers of the node just kind of dancing together in the same sign. And the other thing about the Venus and Mars is that they're really personal planets. You know? In astrology, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars are considered the personal planets. A lot about you. So they're dancing together and kind of dissecting each sign. So as they sit there in Sagittarius, look to your Jupiter, look to what you have in the ninth house. For all my big ninth house people out there, it's like, where are you letting yourself kind of let go of who you think you are? Because on some of that south node in Venus wants you to let go of who you think you are. That north node in Mars wants you, in Aries wants you to kind of imagine what you can't imagine you being. 
reaching for what you can't imagine you could even reach for. Having the courage. So as this next year unfolds, you know, as you, so to speak, become unrecognizable with that Pluto and Aquarius, letting go of what you think you know, Sagittarius. And then Capricorn, structure, that Saturn and Pisces, boundaries, focus, you know, as you open up to that north node in Aries, ruled by that Mars and Zag right now, so as you let go of what you need to let go of, you can start imagining, you can start reaching, you can start doing that Jupiterian expansion. And then as Mars and Venus gets into Capricorn, then it's like the narrow focus of Capricorn, that psychic peacefulness of the Saturn and Pisces. You know? Because on some levels, this Pluto and Aquarius, it's like, what, what are we not doing, or what are we doing? And I think a lot of, as we move into this Aquarius energy, as a lot of people kind of find their serenity of what they do, kind of ripped out from underneath them. So if you have your serenity and something that's outside of you, that's that Libra energy. Serenity and in interactions with the other. And so much of what we do on the planet is what we do for other people. Because other people give us value. They pay us. They, they bring us money. Or they give us what we need. And interestingly enough, when you think about the world and where we're going, that's kind of an old, outdated, antiquated, south node kind of a concept. You know? The Corona Rona and the shutting down and everyone not being able to work. And it's like, what do I do? Where do I get my sense of purpose, my sense of why I'm here? What am I reaching for? And that's where it's weird because I've been thinking a lot about this karma, you know? Avoiding the karma causing actions, acquiring karma, the actions that acquire karma. Because if you think about the south node of the moon, is all the karma that you acquired, you know, either through your action or others. just been wondering about this kind of in a very reflective space right now get that way with the days getting short so follow this Venus follow this Mars in your chart pay attention to what part of your chart that is Understanding the transits of this next year. Might be a really good time to get a transit reading. 
a lot of people find it very helpful. Kind of dive into it. Kind of bring all these concepts into your own personal life. Where's the information that's kind of like a mind virus that you need to let go of? Where are you holding on to it for comfort? You know? Is that south node of the moon in Libra and then that Jupiter in Taurus? Both ruled by that Venus. And with Venus and Mars dissecting each one of these signs. It's going to be powerful. A lot of information is going to be coming forward through the heart, through your feelings, through your reactions. Pay attention. It's possibly a great time to be doing some journaling. Are you paying attention to your actions? You know that Uranus and Taurus wanting you to be you, that unique self, but doing it in such a way that's good for you, that's calming to you. Libra, it's like, who do you get along with? Who are you working with? Aquarius, on some levels, is your community. Pluto getting into Aquarius is going to be like, whoa. Is that your community? What's your role in the community? Is that a good role for you or is that a good role for the community? Or is that a good role for neither? Because a lot of times it's neither. It's not good for the community. It's not good for you. But you're used to it. I struggle with this one. It's kind of like what you were told to be. This is who you are. It's like, whoa. That's who I was. Mars and Aries in the North Node. It's like, who are you becoming? Get some more preaching tonight than being silly. I, you know, I guess I was thought I was going to be silly, but all of a sudden I'm like up on my soapbox, sounding like a preacher. Just kind of tuning in, seeing what's wants to come through as we get to. Leave 2023 behind and move into 2024. Mars and Venus dancing together. Your reactions versus your actions. Are you letting your reactions dictate your actions? Are you allowing what other people are doing to Dictate what you do. Are you allowing the political nonsense, the world nonsense, kind of captivate you? I'm guilty of that one. Try not to, but... Is that good? You know, all these are answers that you got to answer yourself. The thing that's been like really sitting with me right now is like this concept of what if life was about really focusing on not doing things that you shouldn't be doing rather than what we all, or at least what I focus on, most of the people I know focus on of what I should be doing, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do next. Although I spend a lot of times, it's one of the one of my big self-reflective. I mean, I spend a lot of time in meditation on this particular subject. Life kind of throws me into a lot of situations where it's like reacting, you know, to the situation doesn't serve me. 
taking a much more neutral, removed, kind of like allowing. You know, a couple videos ago I was talking about letting it, what is, be what is. So, 2024. What you're attracted to, Venus, what you're reaching for, Mars. Letting go of what you used to think you were attracted to and reaching beyond what you thought was used to be possible. Which is what I would recommend. All right, well, I think we've done a bit of preaching tonight and uh, thank you so much for watching this video and have a spectacular new year.